I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus, the 13th chapter. Exodus 13. And I'm going to try to stay focused on verses 17 and 18. Exodus 13, uh, verses 17 and 18. Years ago when I was coming up in church, Apostle E.W. Wilcox was saying, God knows the way through the wilderness. And all we have to do is follow. God knows the way through the wilderness. And all we have to do is follow. He would say, He knows the way. He knows the way. He knows the way through the wilderness. God knows the way through the wilderness. All we have to do is find. He knows the way. He knows the way. He knows the way through the wilderness. God knows the way through the wilderness. All we have to do. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 and 18 says, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not leave them by way of the land of the Philistines, although it was near. For God said, Lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. I want to tag this text today, a wilderness experience a wilderness experience. Uh, it is, of course, uh, during this season that many of us are in places or feel that there are levels of uncertainties and challenges. And wilderness experiences can cause that uh, when you don't know how you're going to uh, make it when you're not certain of the times and the seasons in all of our lives uh, how and what to expect from this uh, in particular this pandemic that we are dealing with uh, I understand places that we have not planned to go or uh, prepared to go through that it can be uh, a little challenging because this is an experience that for most of us, we have never dealt with anything like this. Uh, the Bible would declare the children of Israel dealt with something similar when they were coming out of captivity in Egypt. Uh, I understand a wilderness is a place of uncertainty. Uh, I've been in a place that I've been comfortable in. I've been in a place where I knew uh, everything and I had gotten accustomed to how things were going. I get that, but when I'm leaving that place and going into a place that I'm not familiar with, it can be like a wilderness. And just as you and I are going through today, uh, we have never experienced a pandemic like this in our generation that caused a, a light change to such a degree that it is now. Yes, uh, stores have been uh, closed at different hours and how we thought was normal to go to a store is no longer that way. Uh, our businesses have changed. Uh, many are working at home. Many are not going out as frequently uh, as we used to to shop for whatever we need. Life has changed and we are now in a place that's uncertain for us. Uh, right now, I understand that they have allowed uh, things to reopen to a certain degree, 
but this is still a new norm for many of us. We came out of what we considered as our normal life and lifestyle, and now we are having to adjust to a different way. God gives us, I believe, a point to learn from in his word in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel was coming out of Egypt where they were comfortable, uh, where they were used to things, even though that was bondage for them when they came out. Now there is uncertainties in their life. And so I believe God brings out a lot of things for you and I to learn from, a lot of things for us to equip ourselves to be able to move forward in what he has called us to go through. Uh, the book of Exodus, Moses uh, records the 13th chapter, verses uh, 17 and 18 in particular, but if we were to follow it through, uh, God gave them certain uh, uh, laws. God gave them certain things that they needed to do, not only in preparation, but even after they have came out. He told them that Pharaoh is going to come after you, but I got you covered. Don't worry, you're going to be all right. But now when you get out, there's still some things you have to do. And I think that's important for you and I because they had not made it to a promised land, a promised place. But this was in between where they were and where they were going. There was a wilderness experience. Uh, there are some highlights there I want you to consider today in this word because when we go there we have to look at coming out of Egypt into a wilderness we have never been there before. We have not uh, uh, experienced these things. We don't know what to expect. Where am I going to get uh, what I need to eat? What is going to be my shelter? The life changed that is around me. How am I going to adjust? Or will I be able to adjust? It's just not for me. For me. Uh, but it's for everybody around me. Everybody has got to deal with. All of us are gathered in a wilderness experience. Not only in my neighborhood, in your neighborhood, not only in our city or in our state, but this is nationwide. And yes, it is even past our nation to our global world. Everybody is dealing with this uh, pandemic. And this now we are in the middle of what could be considered as a wilderness experience. There are times and seasons in all of our lives that we are not prepared. We were not expecting certain things to happen. Uh, places we haven't planned or prepared to go or go through. There are times, uh, even when we deal with this, that this is one of those times and events that we are going through even now, that the wilderness that we are in, even in this pandemic, is a place of uncertainties. I don't know about you, but have you noticed? Nobody is exempt from this wilderness experience. Everybody has to go through this. Everybody has to take precautions. Everybody has to make some changes and adjustments in their life because this of a truth is considered for me through scripture a wilderness experience, a place that we are not familiar with, a place that it is not our normal. We just can't say I'm going to do this, that, or the other anyway because we have to had, uh, we've had to make some adjustments. We've had to make some changes. We can't go in places like we used to just as quick as we want to. For some places there is a line and they will only let so many in and then you have to have social distances. No, this is not the normal way that it used to be. Not only the normal way, it's not the normal shape. Uh, form or fashion, this is a wilderness experience. All of this for all of us is actually a place of uncertainties because we really don't know how long we're going to be dealing with this. Ah, uh, yes, uh, they have tried to say to you and I, uh, I believe it will go away 
by this time or by that time. But the fact of the matter is, they don't know for certain. And, and that's really what a wilderness experience will do. It will put you in a place where there's so much uncertainty. You don't know how long you're going to be there. You don't know what you're going to deal with. The children of Israel said, hey, we ran out of water. We ran out of bread. We ran out of milk. Uh, do, me, do you not know that in a wilderness experience, you really don't know what tomorrow holds? Uh, uh, that's the time where you have to totally and, and committedly depend on God. It's our wilderness experience. A wilderness experience causes us to question about not only our present situation, but also our future. That's what a wilderness experience will do, especially when all around you there is some type of dangers uh, for them in the wilderness and uh, for the children of Israel. Uh, it may have been animals. It may have been what they were not. But for you and I, the dangers are what if this hits my household? What if this hits my family? What if I am affected real close? There are dangers that are there. It causes us to question ourselves and even it will cause some to question their faith, their walk with God. I mean, how could the God that knows everything, how could the God that is everywhere, how could the God that is all powerful allow this to happen to me? Oh, but it's just not you. The Bible declares that the whole nation of the children of Israel was sent through the wilderness. Oh, it's just not you and I but all of us in your community, in my community, in your city, in my city, in my state, in your state, uh, all of us have had to go through this wilderness. It causes me to question, God, when I'm going through a wilderness experience, what am I to do during this time? And I believe God answers that. So if I were to look here in this text, the Bible declares it is teaching us that there are times in our life that everyone has to have a wilderness experience. Would you just tell somebody this may be your wilderness experience, but you are not alone because everybody has to have a wilderness experience. Well, I have not went through that yet, Pastor. Ah, uh, but COVID-19 has proven to you, even though it may not be dealing with you personally, it will change your environment. It will change everything around you where you still will be affected. That's a wilderness experience. That's a place uh, that I, I have to uh, be uh, serious and I have to confess that I've never been here before. I've never experienced this. I did not mentally plan for this. I did not get this in my no. I have to understand that this is a wilderness experience. So what do I do in my wilderness experience? How am I to now adapt to what's going on in my life? The Bible uh, declares that the children of Israel, like you and I today, had to go through a wilderness experience. But God is so good and God is so faithful. He never allows us to stay just in a wilderness experience. I think that leads us to another thought because now he says, since you're in your wilderness experience, let me help you and give you a wilderness education. Don't just go through something without learning something. And I think that's what God was trying to tell the children of Israel. You may be in a wilderness experience but I want to give you some wilderness education. He says it right there in the text. He says God led them round about the way of the wilderness uh, by the Red Sea because he said lest perhaps the children change their, the, the children of Israel change their minds when they see war and if you don't know it by now this is not the first predicament this is not the first challenge this is not the first problem that you're going to have to deal with there's going to be stuff in your life that if you have not learned something from the past 
God is going to prepare you. He says, no, you've got to learn it then so I can get you ready for now so you will be prepared for later. There is a not only a wilderness experience, but there is a wilderness education. Tell somebody I'm getting an education. I'm getting an education. Ah, what do you mean, preacher, that I'm getting an education? Well, one, the Bible declared that when they went to the wilderness, they began to complain. Uh, isn't it something that a wilderness experience can cause a people of praise prior to that experience to be a people of complaining in their present situation? I mean, I used to have what I had, and I used to be able to tell people, I got this, but now I don't know if I'm going to be able to sustain where I'm at and what I got. Uh, their praying, their praising turned into complaining. Oh, if I had time, I would tell you, go back with me. Uh, when they were coming out of Egypt, they were celebrating with the tambourines and with the dancing, and they was talking about how good things were now because God brought them out, but now he brought them to a place of a wilderness experience, and now God is saying, I'm going to give you a wilderness education that you might not have everything all the time like you used to have it, but you ought to still trust me. You may not go through the same way that you used to go through things, but you still ought to trust me. Uh, their education was, even though I'm dealing with something I've never dealt with before, I ought to keep a praise in my mouth. Tell somebody, keep a praise, keep a praise. He says to them, he says, uh, 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 I understand that you may not be prepared for what's about to happen next in your life. He says, just perhaps that you see war and you change your mind and you want to go back into bondage. And that's good to know because every day is not sunshine. Every day is not hello and howdy howdy. There's going to be some rain. There's going to be some storms. There's going to be some difficulties. You're going to have challenges. You're going to, yes, for them it was war. For you it might be a problem. It might be a trial. It might be a, a tribulation. And he doesn't want you to turn back on him. He says, I'm going to take you through a will wilderness education. I'm going to get your past just the experience and I'm going to give you some education so when you come up to your trial you will be able to say that's alright I'm ready I've already went through uh, the fire I've already went through the storm God has prepared me I've learned something from this and so he says there is a wilderness education. What do you mean preacher what are some of the things that I've had to learn in this one thing is I can't trust in my bank account because I don't know if the bank going to be open. They may close on me tomorrow. I can't trust in my job because they may close and they may not hire me again. What are some things that you're going to learn here? Life may turn me upside down and all around. That's the education but I still got God. As long as I got King Jesus. He says not only is there a wilderness experience, but there's a wilderness education there. What has God specifically taught you during this time of this experience? What has God has been trying to get to you uh, uh, personally? What has he tried to tell you per personally? You can't trust that bank account because when you don't have income coming in and all you're using is the income you got, it will soon run out. What are you learning that I can lean and depend on God? Whose side are you leaning on? He's trying to give you a wilderness education. But after that education, this is what I have to leave my hat on. Because after I understand that I'm having a wilderness experience, after I understand that God is going to use this to be a wilderness uh, education, there is a, always a wilderness egress. There's always a wilderness exit. Look at somebody and say, I'm coming out of this wilderness. I will not stay in the same situation. The devil is a lie. COVID-19 may be here right now, but that's just a wilderness experience that God has educated me, but I'm getting ready to have a wilderness exit. Look at somebody and say, you might as well look away because I'm not staying here all of my life. Yes! The Bible declares that I, I, I understand that there used to be a place where everything was great and everything is good. Yes! The Bible declares that I have to go through a wilderness experience and get a wilderness uh, education. But yes! 
the Bible declares that there are times when I have to say, you know what? This ain't going to last always. There are times when I have to grab her and say, I'm, got, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to criticize. I'm not going to murmur. But I'm going to learn how to lead and depend on God. And just like the children of Israel, you and I have to know that God is going to deliver me. Can I just get a few people to step back and say, there will be a deliverance out of this because this is going to be a wilderness day. And that's why your faith in God has to understand and you have to be anchored in the fact that I'm coming out, there will be a wilderness exit. You were not designed, God did not plan for you to stay right there. There uh, has to be a people that will not complain, but they will begin to praise God. And that's one of the things that I choose to do today. Instead of complaining about my wilderness experience, instead of complaining about my wilderness education, I'm stepping back and I'm looking up and I'm saying, God, I'm getting ready for my wilderness education. God, just a wilderness experience. This is not the first time someone has had to go through something. God has not only allowed you and I to go through this wilderness experience, but he is giving us a wilderness education because there will be a wilderness exit. There will be a wilderness egress. We're coming out of this to another place and place. Right where you are, simply bow your heads. Father, I thank you today that you have reminded us that we are your people and while we go through certain things for many of us yes of a truth it is a wilderness a place of uncertainties a place that is perhaps isolated for many and is it of a truth that I can be by myself and still go through the same thing that everybody else is going through or I can be with many and feel isolated but God I understand that this wilderness experience won't last always so I've got to get the wilderness education and I've got to remember there's a wilderness exit I'm coming out of this so help us and show us what we need to do right now for my sister for my brother remind them encourage them allow this word to equip them and instruct them of what they are to do in the midst of their wilderness let them know that they're not by themselves but yet that you are right there with them to bring them through there will be a deliverance 
And so, God, we stand on your word. Because now we understand you know the way through the wilderness. And all we have to do is follow you. We now thank you. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. And I want you to continue. Follow us through social media. Prepare yourself uh, in every way, in every uh, area of media. Bless someone else. Share it. Let them know that North Houston Church, Pastor Castle, is getting ready to come on. And I want you to be blessed just as he has blessed us so many times. Prepare yourself. I look forward to when we come back into the sanctuary. But until then, I want you to connect with us now through social media. You can do that. There are several ways, and they'll put it up on the screen for you. Have a blessed week. I'm praying for you. I love you. I appreciate you for all that you do. I appreciate you praying for us. Thank you so much for your continual financial support. We bless God and we honor you today. Have a blessed week, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.